Let's talk Disney and Bob Iger. Disney reported a stronger than expected operating profit. Revenue increased 4% year over year to $22.2 or $3 billion, I should say, but just missed estimates. The company also raising its um, uh, prices on its streaming platforms and cracking down on password sharing, a la what we saw with Netflix. Uh, CEO Bob Iger commented on streaming ad strength on the earnings call yesterday. The advertising marketplace for streaming is picking up. It's more healthy than the advertising marketplace for linear television. We believe in the future of advertising on our streaming platforms, both Disney Plus and Hulu, and we're obviously trying with our pricing strategy to migrate more subs to the advertiser-supported tier. Join us right now, the other one and only, Ben Smith this morning, Semaphore's co-founder and editor-in-chief. He's still licking his wounds, uh, wishing he had sold BuzzFeed uh, to Disney, uh, for those who don't know, many, many, he writes about it in his book. Uh, ben, it's yeah, very, very nice to see you this morning. That, that wound looking. How are you? Good. Thanks for uh, having me on. So let, um, let's talk about these earnings, because I think there's, there's a lot of questions, and there's been a lot of questions ever since Bob Iger sat down with David Faber uh, on our air now just about a month ago, uh, talking about all of these issues about the future of linear, uh, the future of ESPN, and all of it. Do you think that what you heard yesterday gives you more confidence? What, what's your take on what you heard? I mean, I think the, the, what you see now is Disney grappling with the realities of a pretty difficult, complicated business. I mean, sort of the previous Bob Iger was telling a story about this kind of miraculous skip from one business model to streaming, and streaming would, if anything, be better and easier. And, in, and now what you're seeing is, well, streaming is actually a pretty tough business that, you know, that has a lot of downside and the and 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 the, and the declining business that they are now kind of obviously talking about getting out of is it, linear television is still a huge part of what they do in a really difficult, complicated situation. Ultimately, what he said was consumers will pick up a big chunk of the tab, getting them from one to the other. I mean, double it, you know, basically, essentially, they've doubled the price of Disney Plus. Well, that's of, what I was going to say, the idea that they're doubling the price. Uh, they're they're tr clearly trying to sell you a bundle because if they can lock, lock you into Hulu, of course, that other piece of it is that they're going to have to pay up at some point um, in 24 to Comcast, parent company of this network. Um, and there's, that's, that's going to be a big bunk, a big, a lot, a lot of change um, for them. So the, so the question I, I would ask ahead of that, because remember, they're gonna, that, that's going to cost them. Do you see them doing some kind of linear deal Selling, selling off assets prior to that. I mean, I don't know about the timing, and probably depends a lot on on the market and what you know private equity buyers or others are willing to pay. But certainly, there, you know, he, he just every time he opens his mouth, particularly on CNBC, he seems to signal that they're looking to get rid out of the linear television business. Do you think there? I mean, you just mentioned private equity. Are there strategic? I mean, we keep talking about who is going to buy these assets. And assets, especially that are not growing assets, they may throw off lots and lots of cash. That's the kind of thing private equity does like. But then there becomes a separate question, which is, are you just selling the channels themselves, which therefore, and maybe you sell them with a four or five year content stream of, of you know, licensed, licensed content that you're, you're promising them? Or do you think you can sell to a strategic? Is there a strategic out there that could buy it in this regulatory environment? Could they buy it? Is there somebody who wants to double down in this business? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know because even as as you say, even as everybody's trying to get out of, you know, cable out of you know out of out of these linear businesses, everybody a lot of these companies are still chasing scale, and so so I think there are tensions in both directions. The most complicated question in that space is ESPN, which they are, I think did not sound like Geiger wanted to sell. They've also been talking about um, getting investment from the sports leagues. Right. They're getting into the gambling business. It doesn't look like they're eager to sell ESPN. Um, which is, you know, which is a strong brand with, with you know, maybe a non-cable future, although maybe not as lucrative a non-cable future. Um, but, but that's in also probably the most attractive right. of, the, of their television. Well, that assets. was my question. You just you said the non non-lucrative future. I mean, that's sort of a, maybe that that almost should maybe be the headline for for a lot of the media business. Is that the headline? It's a non, it's a or a less lucrative future. Or do you look at a Netflix and say, actually, that, that could become a lucrative business over, I mean, that's become a lucrative business. If you can somehow jump the shark and get there, that there's a, yeah, I mean, you know, a rainbow on the other side of this thing. There is huge demand for what these folks are doing. 
the cable business was just a uniquely, among other things, easy business for so many years. And I think in which somebody else worried about the consumers and just wrote you a check. And your job was to negotiate once every few years on the size of the check. And I think that that's what's over. And so I think for good reason, everyone, you know, everyone in the media business is really nervous about what comes next and about and, and it's pretty uncharted. You know, how many of these services are people going to pay for? How much will they pay for them directly? That's uh, and that's my final question, which is. And I've always thought about this from, from the get go. I mean, when it was one, when it was Netflix or maybe it was Netflix and maybe Hulu, you have one or two subscriptions. How, what do you think the uh, average American family will hold on to long term? I think that's actually like an existential question for all of this. I mean, you know, I've seen suggestions that it's one or two. I mean, the, these services would like more, but the more the prices go up. But but I think one of the questions is, are people really attached to these services or are they subscribing for a hit show, unsubscribing when it's over? And 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 to what degree are, are, are these companies really going to be able to market the relationship with NBC Universal and Disney versus the relationship with stars and with shows? And I think that that's a big unanswered question. So, Ben, I think you're right, except for one piece of it. And you're a parent. Kelly's a parent. I'm a parent. I think, actually, when you have kids, these services, dare I say, and I, I would not say this about anyone's family here, but some people uh, occasionally put their children in front of the TV. For survival. Uh, you, you, survival. Uh, they can call it a babysitting service. There's lots yeah. of uh, different ways to describe, to describe it. But for a Disney, for example, given the kind of content they have for kids, and frankly for a Netflix, because they've invested in the, in the kids' programming, talk about preventing churn. In an odd way, despite you know, the hit-driven business, there is maybe an underlying business that actually is almost uh, exclusively kids. I don't know. But YouTube know is a really serious... That. Com I'd say YouTube is a really serious competitor there and is free. And Disney, at seven bucks a Disney at seven bucks a month is the tax you pay so that every child in America can, can watch The Lion King once a month. Um, at $14, I think there are probably some people who turn that off.